Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection podcast. Today I have a solo uh, episode and I want to go over a topic, but before I do that, just want to go over a few ways you can help support the podcast. So first, if you are sick of just focusing on weight loss and instead want a body recomp, then my one-on-one online coaching program is for you. I help you lose body fat and build muscle with my body recomp training, nutrition, and lifestyle methods. We look at things like your lifestyle and biofeedback to individualize your training and nutrition program to you and your specific needs. There's also at least one to two bottlenecks that we figure out outside of the training and nutrition protocol that are keeping you from seeing the results that you want to see. And this is typically keeping people back more than they think. If you, until we figure out what that is. So if you're interested in learning more, oh, you can reach out to me on Instagram. I have a link in the show notes to the coaching page where you can see what I offer. And then you can also uh, fill out the application if you want to learn more as well too. Next, if you aren't interested in full coaching, I do one-on-one consultations where we troubleshoot any issues you have and or map out a game plan for the next couple months. Uh, again, the link to that is in the show notes. Uh, if you just want to learn more about a body recomp and what it is, I have my masterclass, my free masterclass on body recomp, and you can find the link to that um, in the show notes. Next, follow me on Instagram, Jeff, H-O-E-H-N underscore, and that's where I'm most active on social media. I do answer questions. If you want to reach out to me, that would be the best place. And then lastly, if you found this podcast to be helpful in any way, if you could leave a rating and review, and that will help more people find this podcast. And again, appreciate everybody who listens. So the topic I want to dive into today is it's around why your body composition reader said you lost muscle and just some things to look out for here if you're take if you're tra- if you're using body composition readers, especially the handheld devices and even DEXA in order to see if you're building muscle uh, or not. So just intro this body composition readers are becoming increasingly popular and in and, and many gyms as well too, right? Um, and so the problem is that many people, so I think this is great. I think it's great that we're able to do this. However, the problem is that many people don't understand what is actually going on. And because they're easily available, you can just get data um, and take it at random times and you not really know what exactly is going on, what it says, et cetera. And there have been countless times when a prospecting or current client decidedly decides to randomly take this and then has come to me upset about it saying they have lost muscle or gained body fat, right? I know like a lot of times now, like a lot of these supplement stores will have them. People will just randomly go in, like when they go and get their supplements, they'll just randomly take them. They'll have them at the gym. They'll be sitting around at the gym. Maybe when you first go meet with a trainer or something like that, they'll have you take these. And so they're becoming easier and easier to, to take. And so what I want to do today is I want to go over why it said you may have lost muscle. And because you've lost muscle, you may this may increase your, what it says, your body fat percentages, right? And so I want to dive into that. So even though I am body comp focused for clients, I do not push them to take their body fat test lean body mass through BIA. And this is bioelectrical impedance analysis. And this is usually the handheld devices or things like in body, but even DEXA2, which I'm going to hit on a part of two when it comes to muscle when it comes to adding muscle and, and, and what it says there on that, I'm just not a fan of clients taking these. Too many times I've seen these measurements get in clients' heads when they don't fully understand what is going on, nor do they know the potential inaccuracies of these devices. Okay. I, I get it. People want this um, objective data of if they're, what they're doing is working. However, when it comes to muscle growth, unfortunately, there's just no good measurement now uh, that we can easily get right now. An, an MRI would be one, but we'll dive into that here in a minute. But there's just no easy way to know for sure. You have to just put in your inputs, like again, weight train, progressively overload, get good sleep, eat enough protein, make sure that you're at maintenance, a uh, uh, high end of your cal of a uh, or a, a small calorie surplus, right? And you just need to be consistent. And then you have to trust the process, unfortunately. Now there's some shorter term things that we can look at here, but again, there's not going to be this objective data that tells you for sure if you're adding muscle other than, like I said, looks, clothes, measurements, progress pictures, strength, those would all be things as well too there that could go into it. But again, none of those are going to be perfect by themselves as well. And so I really have shied away from people taking these because it's really like at the end of the day, even if it says you're like, let's say you're 15% body fat and you're upset about that, it's okay. How do you feel about your look? I feel pretty good about it. Okay. Then what does it matter what it says? I think that we can get too caught up in, in these readings and it just, best case, it doesn't really tell you what's going on. It gives you a general idea. Worst case, it gets in your head. It gets you to change plans when maybe things are working, right? So I think it comes with more uh, cons than it does pros. And because of that, I don't regularly have clients use this or recommend them. Now, if they want to go take it just to check, hey, that's fine. Here's the potential pros. Here's the potential cons. Understanding that the cons are going to outweigh the pros here. What I do is I go off of a combo of progress picks. Again, looking at their picks, seeing, hey, are your arms looking bigger? Do you look fuller? Your measurements. Again, though, measurements can be misleading because it's like if you are in a small calorie surplus and you're seeing measurements go up, we know that probably some of it's going to be body fat, some of it's going to be muscle. So it doesn't tell us everything. 
how clothes are fitting, right? If things are getting like tighter in your arms, but they're staying pretty loose in the midsection, that's a good sign. Training performance, is your strength going up? Are you progressing in the gym? Are you doing more volume? Things like that. If that's headed in the right direction, again, that gives us a general idea, but we have to combine it with all these other things. And then scale weight too. Uh, we also want to monitor that from a muscle building standpoint as well, because if you're seeing things trend down and you're been training for a relatively long time, you don't have a ton of body fat to lose. That's probably not great from a muscle building standpoint. So it's, okay. If progress pictures are improving, we're seeing measurements go up in your chest and arms, legs, clothes are fitting tighter in those areas. Training's continuing to go up. Scale weight slowly been trending up. It's like, all right, we know you're building muscle at that point. I don't need a DEXA to tell me that, or I don't need an in body to tell me that there on that. And so I wanted to go over this post that James Krieger made on DEXA accuracy for assessing hypertrophy. So we already know that things like in-body uh, BIA type stuff is not great. There is this thought that, especially for even from a fat body fat percentage, but a muscle, muscle, how much lean body mass you have as well too. But then we have DEXA, which a lot of people are like, hey, that's quote unquote, the, the, the gold standard, right? For body composition tracking. And so the title of this post was DEXA is unreliable for assessing changes in muscle mass in individuals over time. He reviewed a study by Tavoy uh, in 2019, uh, Dex, and it was titled DEXA accuracy for assessing hypertrophy with training. So he started out his post by saying, do not use DEXA for tracking your changes in muscle. This is from a past issue of the Weightology Research Review. I did a, re a video review of a study that compared changes in muscle size assessed via MRI, which is and what he had as the gold standard for measuring muscle to that of DEXA. Indo individual agreement between the methods was poor. In 95% of the people, the error was approximately 10% in either direction. Some people showed an increase in muscle via MRI, but a decrease via DEXA. Showing, hey, we know MRI is the gold standard. So MRI saying you increase muscle, but then DEXA said you decreased it. And then others showed the opposite, right? Where they gained muscle via DEXA, but then MRI, they lost it. Less than half of the people had an agreement within three percentage points. Those of you who have followed me for a while will know that I'm not a big fan of most body composition assessment techniques for tracking individual progress. Individual error rates can be very high and DEXA is no exception. Now, again, this is from a muscle standpoint. I'm not sure if this is what he would say from a body fat percentage or from a, a fat mass percentage, but I would imagine it's probably still very similar uh, to that. Need act, And then he, he goes on to say, do you need accurate assessment of changes in muscle size? You need ultrasound or MRI. Unfortunately, the majority of people don't have access to those tools. In those cases, you'll need to use proxies like strength improvements, which we talked about, and or rough estimates like circumference measurements. We talked about measurements. And so again, to go over the study a little bit more. Average error was 4.16 percentage points. Five cases showed hypertrophy via MRI, but atrophy via DEXA. And then seven cases showed atrophy via MRI, but hypertrophy via DEXA. And he basically summarized as DEXA is fine for cross-sectional measurements of groups of people. So again, looking at this in like a, a for a study of multiple of, of a group of people, but it's not a good tool for assessing changes in muscle size and in individuals over time. And for accurate assessment, you need MRI or ultra ultrasound, right? So even DEXA too, there on that. And so so what I want to wrap up this episode with is going over why these things may say that you lost some muscle, even though you may not have. Okay. Just, I think this is really going to hit at the importance of standardization for these things. Number one is going to be your hydration status. Your hydration status plays a big role in what this is going to say. It's going to, it can really alter that number. If you are dehydrated, it may say that you lost more muscle than you actually did. So again, if you're going in where maybe you're a little dehydrated, you didn't have as much water, maybe you worked out like the day before it was a pretty intense workout, it may say that you lost muscle. I know I recently had a client that he did his DEXA like right after a workout. It's man, you're probably a little dehydrated. We'll talk about another thing that could be off. And it's, that's going to show that you lost muscle and you're going to read that. And now you're going to think, oh crap, I lost three pounds of muscle or whatever it may be. So the biggest thing is that you want to keep this relatively the same each time you measure it. Otherwise, it may give you, give, may give you different numbers. So we want to make sure that we're that our hydration status is the same going into to using these. Two, poor standardization, which we talked about. This includes hydration status. But if you are doing this at different times under different circumstances, you're going to get slightly different numbers. Your food intake beforehand is different. If it's before training and then you do it after training, again, your hydration. If you do it in the morning and then you do it in the evening, you do it when you just got done with the fat loss phase versus a building phase. Like These are all going to be things that are going to impact that number. So if you just randomly take it, it's the same thing with the scale weight. It's going to, you take random weigh-ins, you're going to get random numbers out of it, right? So again, this could be another thing here that says you, you know, why you lost 
lost muscle. So again, maybe you are a little dehydrated. You're doing it after your training. You maybe fasted before your workouts. Okay. You're probably going to show that you lost muscle or take it. Hey, you just got done with the fat loss phase. Your glycogen storage is lower. You're pretty depleted. Maybe you just got done training. You're not as hydrated. It's going to say you lost muscle. And now you're going to be like, what the hell happened? I, I thought we... You said we need protein, weight training, sleep, and a small deficit, and I won't lose muscle when I drop body fat. And it's like these things are going to impact it acutely, right? So you have to understand that. So if it's like says you lost two to three pounds of muscle, so that's going to be within that air rate there on that. Number three is glycogen loss. So glycogen is a storage form of carbohydrates, and this shows up as lean body mass. When you were consuming fewer calories, say in a fat loss phase, or you had a few days where you where you ate less, glycogen stores uh, can decrease, right? Or even not even ate less, but just like we're in a lower energy availability state. So maybe you had high energy expenditure, you had some really glycogen depleting type workouts, and you didn't and you didn't refill those those storage. You know it's going to decrease, and this is going to show up as lean body mass loss on these devices, and AKA you know you didn't lose muscle in this process. Again, what you do ahead of time is going to be key. Four, again, there's a small error rate. Most of these can be off by two to 4% or more. So this means that if it's a small number that has changed, realize this could just be the assumed error that comes with it. These are more reliable when there's a clear trend one way or the other. And even then it's it's still murky, right? I, I do think if it's okay, hey, you've, you're at 40, let's just make up a number. You're 40 pounds lean body mass. Two years later, you've been consistently training and now it's up to 60. It's anywhere within that range. I would say, hey, that's a good sign that you built some muscle. Now, how much do we know exactly? You don't know, but I think that that does show that they're, if there is that clear trend up over long periods of time, I would say that's pretty safe to assume that you have put on some lean body mass there. But from my understanding, that is still a little murky, right? As James Krieger said, it's even DEX is still not a good tool for assessing changes in muscle size in, in individuals over time. And then number five, the more weight you lose, you may lose some muscle. So this comes down to the fact that, okay, let's say you have lost 20, 25 pounds, 30 pounds, and it's, you're trying to maintain as much muscle as possible, but you see it come down a little bit. Hey, you might still lose a little bit of muscle in the process. And again, it could be all these things that I mentioned before as well, too. Um, so there is a chance you lost some muscle, but remember, the smaller the number, the more likely it's harder, hardly noticeable in terms of the amount of muscle that you lost, but also understand too, that the smaller the muscle, the number is that you lost in terms of muscle mass, just realize that could fall within that air rate um, there. Depending how on how lean you are, how much muscle you have, how much weight you lost in your methods, there's a chance you will lose some muscle in the weight loss process. And this is why I have phases where we prioritize muscle growth. All you can do is reflect on how you go can go about it better next time or improve it while you are still in the uh, current fat loss phase. And so what does all this mean for you? One, don't stress over small changes if it says you lost like a pound of muscle. Chances are that's within the air rate. Look at what you did leading up to it. So again, that's the second point. What you do leading up to it can alter these numbers. So check that out. Make sure you're standardizing that. And it's best to combine it with other metrics as well, right? Don't just take this by itself. Take these with caution and make sure you understand how they work and they being your numbers on the DEXA and body, et cetera. So take these with caution and make sure you understand how they work before placing all of your faith in them and then using them as this gospel. Oh crap. Okay. What's going on? And then lastly, my final point on this is why I don't have clients use these and I don't even mess with in-bodies. I don't mess with DEXAs. Again, if a client wants to go get it, they go get it. But I, I explain to them what's going on and I don't, this isn't not one of my core things that I track uh, with clients because of these error rates. And again, how they are not great at assessing individual changes in, in muscle size there on that. And again, if it says you lost muscle mass, chances are your body fat percentage is going to go up. This is all going to go hand in hand. So hopefully that was helpful there on you and for you. And if we're on the brink of getting a DEXA or an embody, maybe that kind of gets you to rethink it, but at least understand what's going on and to give you a better idea of what you need to do heading into it. So that's it for this episode. If you guys have any questions on this, let me know. I'll chat with you soon. <music>